So every time God uses symbols like wine equals blood. Bread means his body. So everything that God uses has a meaning. When God came to Abraham and told him, leave your father and mother's house and go unto a land I will show you. God did not tell him go unto the land flowing with milk and honey. God simply told him go unto a land I will show you. I will make you a great nation in that place. So the message to Abraham and to those who are in Egypt are completely different. Same location, two different titles. Abraham was not broke. Are you listening to me? God increased him in wealth. But when God found him, he wasn't also a poor man. The hand of God was already on him. So there, were already, there was already an element of increase that was tied to Abraham. So when Abraham went into that land and Abraham's time passed, his son Isaac came in, then uh, uh, Jacob came in, then they went into Egypt because of the drought. That is where they stayed in Egypt for so long that God now told them, I want to take you back to a land that I promised your father. Notice the nation was not created in the land. The nation was started in the land. Then they were taken away. Then they were brought back into the land. Sometimes when God wants to bless you and increase you, he will reveal the promise to you, but he will take you away from it. Teaching good. Let me talk to other people that are ready to hear this. If you notice in the time of Abraham, there was a drought. In the time of Jacob who became Israel, there was also a drought. But after that time, you don't hear of any drought anymore. I will explain to you why in a second. But I want you to understand there is some of you that are sitting here that you feel like you have been drawn away from the promise that God made you. God said I will increase you. God said I will bless you. God said I will heal you. But you feel like life has moved you away from the promise. I'm here to tell you that there is a master plan. Amen. That Hallelujah. God is working out for you. Yes. yes. That the Lord is about to reveal to you right now. Yes. See. Remember that whatever God says, he will make it good. Yes. Mm, sit down for two seconds. Whatever the Lord says, he will make it good. What does it mean? He will carry out what he said to you. So many times we feel, we go through these episodes. I don't like to call it seasons, but episodes. Whereby what you really want to do, you can't do it. You have to sustain your life in another way. That it feels like the dream, the promise, those things. I feel like I'm preaching to the wrong people tonight. Talking to me. Teaching good. What you really wanted feels like it's slipping out of your hands because of time is, you feel like time is not on your side. Come on, come on. You feel like things around you are happening so fast that instead of you being into what you are supposed to be doing, you see other people progressing, but you feel like you are drawn from the promise. I'm here to tell you that this message is for you. Amen. Yes. See. I said I'm here to tell you this is for you. I receive. Amen. 
Look at your neighbor and tell them it's all coming together for you. It's, it's all, all coming, coming together, together for, you. for you. I can't hear you. It's all, all coming, coming together, together for you. you. Look at your neighbor say it's all coming together for you. It's, it's all, all coming, coming together, together for you. you. Now, now, sit, sit, sit for two seconds. Sit for two seconds. Sit for two seconds. Now, now, listen and pay attention. And I want you to really listen to this. There are few things that you need to be aware of. If you are going to enter into that place where there is milk and honey. Remember for Abraham it was the same. I will give you a child years and years and years. Why does it take long? You have to understand for God it is not the time. Time is relative to God. Time is irrelevant to God. God is all about purpose. If you're ready for purpose, there is no time that you have to wait. But if you don't understand the purpose and the assignment, then God will put you in the waiting room to understand what you're about to get into. Amen. 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 So stop pray, praying for your time. Start understanding purpose. Mm, that's good purpose of what is happening and purpose of what God is doing Amen. you see everyone before Abraham whenever there was a problem they ran away from the land the land of God the land ran away from Canaan the, the land of promise they ran away from it whenever there was opposition whenever there was drought they always had options to go out so when they went to Egypt, you have to understand the word Egypt in Hebrew actually is interpreted a narrow place or a closed place. And to be in a narrow place, it means to be in a place of limitation. Some of you, you had a dream that God gave you, but you feel like you're in Egypt because you're in a place of limitation. Uh, you feel like what you wanted to do you can't you have to labor for somebody mm. you have to work in order for you to survive which it is true you ought to work to eat but he never said you need to work to survive work is not your lifeline work is just a means in which we put food on the table but it should never feel like slavery if you feel like you can't stop working if you stop working you drown understand you are in spiritual egypt wow. and if you are in spiritual egypt the promised land is actually for you amen amen amen, amen. now what does milk represent and then you will understand what we're about to talk about milk represents wealth because in those days milk they got it from cows from goats from camels from sheep so whoever had milk had animals and anyone that comes from an ancient understanding you understand that your finances were measured by how much animals you have that is why when you read the book of Job, it doesn't really talk about his farms. It talks about how many animals he possessed. Because anybody that has animals definitely has money to have land to keep them. Because he has a product to produce that does not take effort, but the product produces after its kind. So anybody that has milk has the ability to produce after his kind. It means that you created something and that thing continues to sustain itself, continues to multiply itself. Because an animal will give birth to another animal, to another animal, there is more milk, you have product to sell. Okay, let me, let me find people that want to understand what I'm saying. You're teaching, you're teaching. So milk is always a representation of wealth when the bible talks about fat it is because of the cream you know butter uh -huh. when it says the blessing of the lord maketh fat it's talking about the 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 milk 
You know some deliverance you don't need come out. You just need to get fat. Amen. Amen. When God expands you, you break beyond. Look at people who don't like gym. (laughs) Some things God just needs to make you outgrow it. And that, that is why it says the yoke will be broken because of the fatness. The word anointing there actually is fatness. You'll be so well nourished spiritually. Chains just fall. So milk represents wealth that you did not labor for. Wealth that you did not what? Labor for. All you have to do is maintain. Honey is what your enemies are gathering for your good. Okay, let me, let, me, let me look for somebody that I can talk to. Yeah, Papa, teach us. When the Bible is saying the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous, it is talking about the honey dimension. Amen, amen. Because bees make honey that they don't really use. But if you try to touch it, they will kill you. But they are working, gathering all the things, putting the ingredients. That's it, that's it. Come on. All those who are standing, you are entering into that place. I receive. I receive. Look at your neighbor, say you are entering into that place. You are entering entering into into that that place. place. Uh, Sit down for two seconds. Amen. Honey represents the sweetness of life. People labored so that you you can enjoy. Because to them, the labor they don't benefit from, but you benefit from it. Now, I want you to understand now why God is telling them. And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt. Remember, Egypt means a narrow place, a place of limitation, a place you cannot grow. Remember that the children of God of Israel were increasing in number but they were not great because just because there were many there were more than the Egyptians but they were still slaves they were in a place of limitation now listen to what God says unto a land of the Canaanites notice God is saying that land is for the Canaanites but when he gave it to Abraham he said I will bring your children back and I will give them this land But God did not say, you stay here, remain here, and give birth and tell them not to go anywhere to remain here. God allowed all the events to happen because he needed people to make honey, people to bring cows. Wow. Wow. Some of you are not getting it. I I, think good. You are not drawn away from the promise because it was not yours amen you are drawn away so that people can work on your behalf yeah Yeah. that when your time comes uh, see hallelujah uh, some of you are not listening sit for two seconds because notice God is telling them, he's not, he's, he's not denying that the land is not, he, he said, listen, their father was the first one to be there. The reason why Abraham went there is to claim the land. So that when those people, when the land is barren, nobody is there. Canaanites come, Amorites come, all these people come to that land. Nobody will be there. But they can work when the original owner, okay, let me give you an example. You can make an apartment as beautiful as you want. It's not yours. Amen. You can make all the modification to that rental property. One day they can just wake up. Ah, You have three months. You need to go. Then you ask yourself, but I, but I. It doesn't matter. It's not yours. 
and if you damage it, you have to pay for it. And in those three months, you need to find a place and you need to keep paying until you leave. So God put a spiritual jurisdiction for the enemies that were not enemies, but they were enemies because they are working on behalf of the children of Israel to make a land that was not truly as useful, so useful. Because the children of God themselves, they could not really do some of the things that those people needed to do. So God sent all kinds of specialists to groom the ground. Sometimes your enemy is preparing your breakthrough. Amen, amen. Receive it. I receive. Uh, look, look at you. I think I'm preaching to the online people because... Before these people were there, it was not called the land flowing with milk and honey. It wasn't. Amen. So, never be discouraged. When you see some people going ahead of you, Jesus said, I go ahead of you to prepare a place for you. Yes. Whenever you are in a profession and people go ahead of you. Come on, you teach it good. Teach it good. I think I'm done. Amen. But there are certain things that you need to understand, and there is a certain deliverance you need before you enter into the promised land. But the Lord had to draw his people, the Lord had to draw some of you away from the promise because the value of the promise was not there. The urgency of the promise was not there. It was just a means for you to express yourself, but you did not see the eternal purpose of almighty God in it. It was just what you want to do what you think you should do but it was not connected to anything the purpose in why you still have breath in your lungs why you are alive why you are here at this hour yes. what the urgency is you fail to see it god has to draw you away god understood his people would not value this thing until they are foreigners they will value their own country So God allowed them to go into a narrow place called Egypt. They suffered big time. In the first few years, the great prophet Joseph was there. Everything was splendid. They were even given a portion of the land. Anywhere you want to live, go. And they went there and they increased and they were fruitful. Another guy came and changed on them and said, Now nah, these guys are increasing too much. We need to press them down. Always understand this thing. When everything seems to be going good, and all of a sudden there is a block, all of a sudden you're being pushed down, know that your promised land is almost ready. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am giving you spiritual signs to discern some things. It means that you are staying in that place. What you needed to learn in that place is, is coming to an end. Amen. Amen. Are you listening? Yes. yes. But when you are living there, you are about to leave. There's a few people you need to pay attention to. Mm. Help us. Because these kinds of voices will stop you from going into the land flowing with milk and honey. Go to the book of Numbers. We'll come back to this and we'll break it down more. Numbers chapter 16 from verse 12. Numbers 16 from verse 12. And Moses sent to call 
Dathan, Abiram, the sons of Eliab, which said, we will not come up. Which means we are not going. And Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, which said, we will not come up. Verse 13. Is it a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of the land that floweth with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness? Except thou make thyself altogether a prince over us. Stop right there. There are people who if God gives them a relief, they think that is the breakthrough. They don't understand that when you have received the relief, it is because now you are on the road to get to somewhere. Some of you have aborted. Wait, 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 wait for a second. Some of you have already started aborting your miracle. Just the moment you started getting relief, you stop coming to church. You stop watching messages because you feel like, okay, even me, the Holy Spirit is in me. But not understanding that the spirit of the sons of Eliab has already entered you. That will keep you in nowhere. You see, the wilderness is nowhere. Is no man's land. Anything goes. But because there are no standards of life. Just because you can do whatever you want, you think you have entered into the promise and the liberation of God because there is no one whipping you. There is no one telling you, do this, do that. So you think that you have entered the place of freedom, yet you are in nowhere land. The Bible says clearly like this, that all those who remained in the wilderness, that the spirits of the sons of Eliab entered, they all perished. No one survived, they perished. It means that they had no future, they had no destiny, they had nothing, they were just there. Remember, the moment your life lacks motion spiritually and physically, you are dead. You see, hell... The people in hell are alive, but they are considered dead because they are confined to a pit of fire. There is no more living. It's just torment. Just get locked up in a small room. You'll see how you can go crazy. So apart from all the fires and the torments, just being somewhere where you're just like this, that's why time out is very disturbing for children. Face the wall, time out. <laughs> it's terrible. Many of you have already relaxed, yet you have not entered into the promise. That means the spirit and the voices of the sons of Eliab has entered you. There is an influence. It means that you are not after the promise of God. You are after your own comfort. Wow. You see, a lot of believers today, our joy is to be happy. I just want to be happy. I want to be happy. I want to be happy. I want to be happy. Do you know the reason why people are seeking happiness is the reason why people are in drugs, in alcohol, in wrong relationships, in the wrong places, at the wrong time, doing all these things because you are seeking happiness, you are not seeking joy. Yeah. Happiness is circumstantial, but it's not sustainable. Yeah. When the dopamine's hit a certain place, whee! Then it goes down. Mm. You get your new car. Yay! 
One week later, I say, I like the car, but it no longer invokes the same happiness. Never seek happiness. Seek joy, but joy is only found in purpose. Amen. Amen. Joy is only found in purpose. When I stand for hours praying for you, ministering to you, teaching you, doing these things, I don't do them because I get paid. I do them because of the joy I experience when I see your life, your life, your life changed. Amen, amen, amen. That is what life is about. Amen. It was a joy for Jesus to go on the cross because he knew what he would see. He wasn't happy doing it. Mm. Wow. wow. Happiness can lead you into no man land. The wilderness. Come on. I'm going to sit for a few seconds. So the first spirit you need to overcome, the first voice you need to overcome, is you need to ask yourself, are the voices of Eliab's son already operating in me? Notice they called Egypt a land flowing with what? Milk and honey. Many of you, when God frees you from a job that you did not like, and God has placed you somewhere whereby you are waiting, you don't know what is to come. You know, sometimes I love children in this aspect. I love children generally, but I love this about children. They are always waiting in anticipation to see what is going to happen. Many of you, you no longer have the excitement of the unexpected. Come on. When you have to go into purpose, you have to go through nowhere man land huh. where you decide if you're going to follow God or you're going to go back to bondage. Yes. The only way you can follow God is if you understand what he said. Amen. If you heard what he said, then you will understand. You know what? It is okay to be dry for now. Yes. It is okay to struggle for now. Oh. It is okay not to afford those things I like right now. Yes. But the Lord is preparing me. Yes. Amen. The Lord is aligning me. Yes. This is why, why so many people get delivered. And after a little bit, they go back into bondage. Because their comfort is not in what is to come. Their comfort, their vision cannot go beyond what they have already experienced. The only nation they had ever lived in for that long was Egypt. So they became Egyptian. So they could not see another land that didn't have pyramids. To them they had arrived. Some of you, you are connected to great people and then God just separated you. It's because you are about to be the great person that people will come to. Amen. Receive. Amen. The Lord has to change standards. Are you listening to me? The Lord sometimes has to do those things in order to show you the light you carry. There are times that God will move you because those people are not project. They are not, they used you to make their light brighter, but not knowing that your light was the one that was making them bright. After you have learned what you need to learn. Yes. 